corporate finance practice problem using OneNote, convertible bonds, and diluted earnings per share. Get ready, it's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if would like to, we're going to be in the icon on the left-hand side in the Practice Problems tab down in the 1930 Convertible Bonds and Diluted Earnings Per Share tab. Also note, when using OneNote, look at the Immersive Reader tool. Our presentations will also be down in the text area with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing the icon up, we have our information up top, calculations on the right and down below in the blue. We're looking at the convertible bonds, those being those bonds that can be converted, although not required to be converted to a number of shares. And the thing we're concentrating on this time is if they were converted into shares, we'd have more shares out there, which could result in the diluting of the shares because if there's more shares out there and you think about the earnings per share then that can be diluted also of course if we switch from bonds which have a tax impact due to the fact that they're going to have interest related to them to stocks then we could have a tax impact and in the, in the expense related to the interest expense so we want to consider kind of the two sides of the spectrum here one being the earnings per share without the the exercising of the bonds and then we'll get all the way to the other side where we assume that all bonds are exercised so we get the kind of two scenarios and then of course you can imagine people running any number of scenarios in between to try to see how many bonds might be exercised and what that might do to say the earnings per share so the basic idea would look something like this if we had the basic earnings per share we'd say all right well the information on the on the left let's look at the information first we have the net income 800,000 we have the shares outstanding 70,000 shares outstanding that's before any conversion we also have the convertible bonds out there at a total of 1,600,000 and the par value is 1,000 the rate on the bonds is 12%, so they have to pay interest at the 12%. And the conversion ratio, meaning the $1,000 bond or each bond could be converted into 25 shares if so choose, but chosen by the investor. The tax bracket is going to be 35%. Remember that the tax rates are progressive tax systems, so we're looking at basically the last tax bracket because that would be the margin that we would be in to figure the impact we're looking at here. So normal earnings per share would simply be the 800,000 net income, the income performance number divided by the number of shares that are out there. And that would simply give us the 800,000 divided by the 70,000. That's going to give us our 11.43 earnings per share. Now, if we think about the bonds and say, okay, well, what would happen then if we assume that all the bonds then are converted to think about how many shares could possibly be out there given the fact that these securities are out, out there based on that 800,000. To do so, we've got to first think about the adjustment or the adjusted net income if we had a situation where the conversion was exercised and then we'll consider basically what the what the impact is of the well then we'll consider the new shares that will be out there then we'll have what, our, what we will need to calculate the new earnings per share with the adjusted net income and the adjusted shares that are then out there. So first, let's look at the adjusted income. We're going to say that uh, the net income is 800000 Now we're going to adjust this for interest on the bonds after taxes because if we had the bonds out there, there would be interest on the bonds, which would be a reduction in net income. But then it would be a tax impact because when we have interest expense, that's going to be a deductible for taxes. So we're going to have to take into consideration the tax impact, which kind of you could think of as kind of like getting our money back with a tax with the taxes due to the fact that the interest would be the deductible. So we got the convertible bonds of the one million six hundred thousand in total. The interest rate is twelve percent. So we'll multiply that out. That means the interest expense that would decrease the net income would be one six zero 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 times the 0.12 we're assuming that's already included in our 800,000 here and then there's going to be a tax impact meaning we would have an interest expense of this amount that we would have to add back but we also have a tax impact on it and that tax impact we're going to say is going to be 1 minus the 35% 1 minus 35% is 65% so that means that we're going to take that 192 
and we're going to add it back, but we're only going to add back 65% of it. So we're going to say that times the 0 0.65, that's going to be our 124,800 that we're going to add back uh, to the net income after taking into consideration the taxes to get to our net income here. So that's going to be the 124,800 plus the 800,000 gives us the 924,800 for our adjusted net income. Next, we got to consider, well, how many shares would be outstanding if all these convertible bonds were converted? We could then say, well, the adjusted number of shares would then be the 700,000. That's our starting point number of shares. Then we have the new shares or the converted shares that would take place. The convertible bonds, there's 1,600 of them. That's not given in the problem, but what is given, we have the 1600000 total bonds payable. And we divide that by the amount of each singular bond par value divided by 1,000. That gives us the 1,600 bonds that are out there. The conversion ratio is 25. So there's 1,600 bonds. They can all be converted into 25 shares. So 1,600 times 25 would give us the 40,000 uh, on the new shares, the new shares that would be out there if the bonds were to be converted. So that would mean that we'd have the 40,000 plus the 70,000 shares. That gives us 110,000 uh, shares that are out there, the adjusted shares. So now we have the adjusted income and the adjusted shares. So we can calculate our diluted earnings per share, which would be the uh, 924,800, our adjusted net income. We calculated up above. And then we have now our increase in the adjusted number of shares, 110,000. So then if we divide this out, we're going to say that we have now 924,800 divided by 110,000. That's going to be the 8.41. Noted, notice it's diluted, of course, meaning it's smaller than the earnings per share we had before at 11.43. Note also that if we assume that, that we're going to have the, the interest impact, which would basically increase the net income as we saw here, which you would think would increase, you know, the earnings per share. That's kind of overshadowed by the fact that there's a substantially more shares out there uh, of the 110 versus the 70. So the impact overall then we would think would generally be a dilution, meaning because there's more shares out there, even though the income is slightly higher due to the fact that we don't have the interest uh, expense that would be there in the net income that the earnings per share would basically be lower in total than it would if there was no exercising of, of the options, then it would be at the 11.43 in this case. So you can see those are the two kind of extremes, of course, where we'd, we'd have to, then you can kind of think about what could happen and what run scenarios and whatnot if there was a no, if these none of these were converted versus if all of them were converted and you can think about running scenarios if there was, you know, portion of the shares or some of the shares were converted and so on and so forth.